What is going on guys, welcome back to the review of Season 9 on Creating a Legacy with FC United in Manchester. There is no webcam today because I want you to see the full screen for all the information etc. So first off we are almost breaking even due to the money we got um, etc at the end of the season which is nice. Hopefully a good pre-season in terms of fixtures can, um, can make us some money because we do actually need that. Um, so we're going to review the the season, but before that we've actually made two signings at the end of the season. So let's just um, bring these in for you. The first person we've signed is Andrew Mun Munro. Um, I brought him in as a backup defender instead of having someone on loan to play in that position. Um, he's going to be probably a limited defender and I genuinely think he's a decent player. He's got some fairly good stats. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Happy with him. He's coming from Dartford. He's coming on a free, so it's a risk I think that was worth taking. Now the fact we're moving up in the league one is something which may would I have considered this deal if we if I knew we were going to be in League One. Um, I think I think so. I think so because he is only a backup, so fairly happy. And we have a new striker. This will be our starting striker for next season, and it is Dermot Rochford. Now he's coming over from Dun. Um, Dundalk and um, then he went to Doncaster but you see he didn't actually play a single game for Doncaster he's picked up a cap for Ireland as well as 1221 scoring seven times for them um, so he hasn't actually made a professional start here which is just insane because I genuinely rate this guy so really excited to get him in and see exactly how he's going to perform for us um, yeah it's exciting to know that Early on, I've secured a striker because I said one thing I needed was a striker. So the fact that I've got someone in who I do think is going to be first choice, um, I'm happy with that. He could end up being second choice, but that's only if I find an absolute world-class superstar who's willing to drop to League One. Um, but let's go through the competitions and stuff first, and we'll go into the squad. So, you see, Trammy went up with us, so we've gone up in second place, which is absolutely superb. So we'll go into the team stats first off. Average possessions wise, we were in 10th at 50.91. So it was nice how we actually did get above that. Penalties, we ended up with three, um, scoring two of them. If you remember, um, Waite has actually missed one early on in the season. That's good memory for me remembering that, I think. Um, let's go on to the attacking side of things. So goals wise, we were dreadful. Joint 17th, scoring 59 goals. Not too bad. Cross completion, mm, where are we at? 19th, oh dear me. Let's move on from all them, shall we? Goals from corners, how did we do? We got seven, which is nice. That shows progression. I'm really happy with that. Goals from direct free kicks, we actually won that with two. Very nice. Goals from indirect free kicks, we only got three, which is 14. So maybe something we can work on. Pass completion ratio, we were down in fifth place with 72%. Um, which isn't too bad at the end of the day. Passes completed, um, 16,973. Um, quite a lot behind Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury played some nice football, and I'm definitely going to be looking at some of their players to bring into the club, I think. Might be interesting to see. Um, Defending-wise, we finished with the second-best um, record with 43 and 46 games, which isn't bad. Crawley obviously beat us there, but we need to take this defensive um, solid solidity into um league one guys i think that's vital in terms of us staying in the division clean sheets wise we third with 16 clean sheets um average attendance we finished seventh with 4807 in terms of capacity we finished with 96 percent that is absolutely beautiful and as you see again sellouts 11 the second best was Trammy with one. I think next season in League One, we go going to sell out every single game, which is just superb. Net transfer spend, um, we were down here at minus 5.6, which isn't bad. Um, salary, so we had the 15th best salary or worst. I don't, like we were spending the 15th most. I can't explain it. Um, so we did well to come second I think in League 1 we're going to probably have the lowest wage budget in the division so in terms of um, player stuff, let's go top goal scorer, do we have anyone in this list we do, Mark Collins managed to get in with 16 in the end, so he had a really good run near the end of the season which it's definitely nice, penalties wise, Bram, he, play, he took played, he took 2, scored 2 
Um, assists wise, do we have anyone in the assists? We do, we have John. He's in there with 10 assists, which is nice. Key passes, 322 there, but we have Bram Ellison and Lee Simpson both in there with 186 each. Pass completion ratio against Shrewsbury players up there. The quite frustrating, I actually looked at this guy and I deemed him not good enough. Um, so it does show everyone makes mistakes in management. Um, tackles per game, do we have anyone who's been standing out in terms of that? We don't. Um, but I think that's it for the league itself. So let's go through the players and just kind of give our our thoughts on them. So Hugh Ward, he only ended up playing 9 games, 1 subs, so 10 in total. Um, but he's definitely here for next season. He's a fantastic backup. Um, a Welsh player, he's 24 now, but I do think he's going to just be a great player for us for a couple of years yet as a backup, being able to get game time. Maybe I should give him more games in the Cups. The next one is Billy Waiters. Now, this is a tough ask. He's 29. His physicals are deteriorating. Um, I'm considering cashing in on him in the summer. Not too sure, but I'm considering it just because he's going to only get worse after next season. And financially, we do need the money. So, probably going to consider that. In terms of stats, etc., with him, um, uh, in terms of stats with him, as you can see, 74% pass completion, 48% shot, 55% tackle completion. So, if you remember the 55 and 74 for when we get to John. And we can check that. The next guy is um, Ryan Williams. He ended up playing the four four starts, nine sub games. But this season, he just did not get in the team. Still had 78% pass completion, but his season and his career at FC United Manchester is over. His physicals have just plummeted. He's now 33, and unfortunately, we wish him all the best for the future. The next one is Samuel Aqua. Now, if you remember, we brought this guy in as a future right-back for the club. Um, he's probably going to be starting next season in all the games, guys. I think his time has come. His mentals are good enough. His physicals are good enough. His technicals are going to improve. And um, I think it's time for him to step up and show me what he can do when we go into League 2. Into League 1, sorry. Um, the next one is Pepe Castano. 142 caps now for us. Um, he has been superb. A 6.74 average does not do him justice. Um, I'm genuinely curious if we can hold on and Blackburn are sniffing around. Um, now, they did offer 80k for him, which was just ridiculous. I don't think I would take any less than 4 500 because at the end of the day, he is a very, very solid defender. Um, the average rating and stuff I just completely ignore. And I would rather go on stuff like this. So, as you will see in the defending side of things, 85% of tackles won, which is just a superb figure. Headers-wise, only 58%, but I'm genuinely confused by that because it seems one side of your defence always gets poor headers. So, ignoring that, he is winning lots and lots of tackles, guys. Next one is Mark Collins. Now, he was on loan, if you remember, and... He's actually stepped up in the terms of scoring 16 and 35 to end. Am I going to get him back? I'm not too sure. His contract is actually running out. So there's a possibility we could sign him, but how much would he want? So he would want 800 a week to come in. Can we get him on a rotation? On a kind of a you score goals and you'll get paid type situation. And put the sell up up because I'm going to drop the wage. Put that up for three. Ah, come on. 700 a week. Oh, team of the year bonus. They love a team of the year bonus. And is he going to get in the team of the year in League One? No. So that is something, it's a risk which I think is always worth taking with that kind of thing. Okay, so Mark Collins is going to actually join us. So I do think that's a a, a good deal because... um. As I say, he started scoring so many more near the end of the season. And scoring 16 and 35 isn't too bad at a young age. Hopefully he can continue to develop and we have him and obviously our new Irish striker. So the next guy, the legend, the history maker at the club. 294 appearances now for the club. 7.38 average throughout the season. 73% tackle completion. 78% passing completion. Um... A player who I absolutely adore, and he's only going to continue to get better, I hope, and continue to captain the side going into League 
one, he is still the captain. And if you look, he has been with us from day one. Coming through the youth ex- recruitment on season one, he's just... Look at that. 6.63 here. And this was when I kind of thought, can he step up here? 7.15, 19, 36, 7.47, 7.43. He has just developed so much, guys. And um, it's a pleasure to have someone like this developing. I almost want to buy an FC9 Manchester and ask him to put his name on the back. Um, the next one is Jokai. Now, if you remember, we brought him in 2020 when we brought in Castano at the back. These two have been a centre-back partnership for so long now. Um... 6.92, so he has actually got a better average rating than um, Castano. And if we look at this, 85% tackle completion, also 79% headers won. So he's the one who's winning the headers. I think he's probably going to, we're probably going to keep him for another year. I think I'm going to stick with him for next year and hopefully he can continue to impress me. The next one is Tony Gomez, he will be leaving. Um, he's just completely flopped the last few years and unfortunately his time is up. Next one is Zach Mills. Um, <sighs> I think we've done this for the last two seasons. Um, do do we keep him? Isn't good enough for the FC9 Manchester squad, according to the assistant. Um, 6.91 average. 47 games played for us. His physicals are slightly dropping. He's on £350 a week. He can play both full-back positions. He's played 285 times for the club. But This is so tough, but he's going to go. He has to leave. I'm sorry. The decision has been made that Zach Mills will say goodbye to FC United of Manchester at the end of this season after a seven-year run. One, two, three, four, five, six. After seven seasons at the club, guys. 12,000 he cost me in the conference north. So he's actually been with us since the bottom. Um, so it's very, very sad to see him go, but unfortunately it's time. Next one's Callum Montgomery. Didn't really play. Going back to Norwich. He was on loan. Thanks for your time. Goodbye. The next one is Kevin Pettifer. Now, if you remember, this guy's been brought in to retrain in both fullback positions. He needs to get more game time. I completely agree with that, and he's going to get a lot more of it next season. Uh, he might actually end up playing a few games in midfield as well, just to kind of keep him happy, because I think in, in the long run, he's going to be a great player. Next one is Scott Phillips. He came in on loan. Um, he is actually someone I wouldn't mind getting back as our third-choice striker for next season. Um, really... Decent end to the season. It's gone 6 in 11, 14 and 5 in total, according to the history books. The next one, James Reed. He's still only 23, turns 20, 24 soon. Strange enough, he's only two star, only lived as a useful player. 7.04 in defence midfield. Really happy with them stats and. If we go on here, 85% tackle completion. So him in front of them two defensive, in in front of them two centre backs is just a superb, superb figure. He's also winning 83% of his headers, 78% pass completion. The useful player comment from the assistant, and this is why I'm getting a new assistant. He's what a stupid thing to say. Rory Ring. A player who's been with us for a long time now. Um, 2020 came and only played 54 times. He's still developing. I still have a lot of faith that he's a great player to have as a backup for the club. Next one is Alberto Risi. I was super keeper. He's 22 now. He's been with us since 2022. He's played 69 appearances. And this season he has done well. 80% shot saved accuracy. That's nice. Ending below, above 75, I'm happy with. Pass completion, 79. Shots um, parried to shots held. He holds a lot more than he parries, which is nice as well. It shows he's not giving it back for them to um, have a chance for a rebound. Next one, Scott Rolf. He played a few games, but he's been on loan, so he's going back to Birmingham. Thank you for joining us, Scott. Next one is Sindri Shevin. Now, if you remember, I brought him in after a poor start to the season to be our defensive-minded left-back. And he has really impressed me. Quite a low average rating in terms of 6.81 in the league, but I think that's quite unjustified. He's 72% pass completion, 89% tackle completion. I mean, wow. 
that shows my two centre backs, my defence midfield and my left back all deserve to be in the squad. They are tackling so well, they're winning so many balls. The next one, Lee Sibson, the player who is dividing opinion at the club. The staff don't like him, they don't think he's good enough. I think he is definitely good enough. And if we go on to this, playing in the advanced playmaker role, he has 80% pass completion, 63% tackle, 35% shot accuracy, which needs to be improved. And definitely something he can work on. Um, so we're going to look into that. But in terms of in general, he's developing so well. I'm absolutely delighted. The next player is Anaskete. Gone on, on loan from Barnet. He played one substitute appearance. So goodbye and we will not see you again. Um, the next one is Kevin Smith. A sign we brought in. He's played 20 games for us. Um, he's not happy about the amount of games he's playing. But... When players are playing well, I'm not going to drop them, and unfortunately, he is back up. So the next one is John, and um, John Dagger Prostace, and yeah, that, and now you understand why we call him John. Um, 7.42 average, and if we do go on the stats, etc., you can see 71% pass completion, 70% tackle. So he is ta winning a lot more tackles than Billy Waiters, which is definitely something to consider in terms of the formation I use, should he be starting over Billy. Possibly, but his natural fitness is definitely destroying him because he only plays one game then needs a rest. But that's the end of the review, guys. We've gone through all the players. You've seen the, the squad at the minute. I can't show you the transfers I'm planning because I don't really know them at the minute. Um, as you can see, in terms of work going on at the minute, there's nothing. We've been given a transfer budget of 20, wage budget is 34. So that's not too bad, guys. Um... What else was I going to show? Have we gone in? Have I? Yes! I am back in the favoured personnel. I am back in there. Get in there. That's what happens when you win the promotion again. I'll go back in there. I'll drop back out straight away. Um, right, I'm happy with that. To end the review episode, we are going to do something I've wanted to do for a few weeks now. Bram Ellison, contract, trigger contract extension. Trigger a three-year contract extension. Yes. James Reid. Contract, trigger contract extension, trigger a three-year contract, yes. <coughs> Lee Simpson, contract, trigger, three-year extension, yes. So they were the three players, if you remember, who signed massive bumper deals and now he is with us for another four seasons. So delighted with that and it also will whack values on them players right up there because they have massive long deals left. So... Absolutely delighted with the season, delighted we've won promotion, it's onwards and upwards, I can't wait for next season, so join me as we start our season in League 1 next guys, that sounds nice.